New cars. New teams. A new championship. The 2015 ARR Crave Scottish Rally Championship kicks off the 60th anniversary running of the Arnold Clark Thistle Snowman Rally here in Inverness. With over 60 crews registered for the SRC this year, it's looking to be the most competitive it's been in a long time. Before we head to the stages, let's have a look at some of the competitors to watch out for this year. Five times champions David Bogey and Kevin Ray headed the 108 crews in the Fiesta R5 Plus. Out on DMAC tyres, left over from Rally GB, David was unsure how the car would be in the icy conditions. So David, first rally of the season, how are you feeling today? Yeah, good, this is always my favourite round of the championship, so we've not really got any plans other than that, just to go out and have a good day's fun here and, and see what it takes us. And what's your plan of attack for today? Just go as fast as I can, to be honest, you know, the, the conditions are going to be quite difficult, be very slippy, and of course we are running first car on the road, so we'll possibly be clearing the road or, or finding the slippiest parts first, so we'll need to approach it with a certain degree of caution, but you know, we're, we're here to win. Third in last year's SRC, former snowman winner Jock Armstrong was expected to be competitive on the snow and ice. Well, I'm feeling okay, yes, quite excited about it all. Got the car sorted, hopefully, and everything's there, so as I get slower, the car gets quicker, so that uh, hopefully it'll, it'll create itself out, so but no stunning times, but I'll still hopefully be there or thereabouts. There's a lot of competition round about you today, so there'll be some good battles going on. Yes, there is. Uh, there's a few people out with a few new cars, and everybody's talking about weight and how they're going to cut the weight off their car and how they've done it. So I've lost a couple of kilograms myself, so I think hopefully things will be right. Armstrong's sparring partners from 2014, Mike Faulkner and Peter Foy, were back to battle with the Orange and Pretzel once again. You have to be 100% from the word go but with the weather conditions like this, you're just going to have to take every corner as it comes and just try and be as quick as you can, but staying on the road will be just as hard. And what's your plan for the season this year? Well, just the same as before. We're just going to start the season and just see how it goes. Just take one event at a time. There's no point in trying to get ahead of yourself. It's just uh, worrying about today for now. Fifth in last year's SRC, Barry Groundwater was back in his Evo 9 with Sean Donnelly in the passenger seat for round one. So Barry, first round of the championship today, how are you feeling? Uh, Alright, yeah, a bit of nerves on the go today, you know, I haven't been out since, uh, well, since GB last year, so, you know, the first time I drove the car was actually this morning over here, so, you know, a lot to, you know, a lot to put up with today, I think. And what do you think of the snowman rally? Do you enjoy the stages? Yeah, the stages are always good, you know, never, no matter what the weather, so, that's not an issue, it's, uh, well, a lot of good competition here today, so, you know, we're going to have to see where we, where we fare up, I suppose. After a year playing in an EVO, a WRC Focus and a Mark II Escort, Quinton Milne was looking to mount a championship assault for this year. Arming himself with the Mitsubishi EVO 6, he was lucky to be at the start at all after a last minute engine blow up in testing. Yeah, really good actually. Um, it'll be wet and slippy up there. I've not driven this thing before. We uh, had engine failure the other night and Donny kindly lent us an engine. It's very good of him. So, uh, yeah, we we'll just... The uh, snowman can be a lot of rain, down a lot of car control and a bit of good luck, as I say, so here's hoping we'll have a good run. So I can pick it up. Beating Milne on the last minute front, Andrew Gallagher and Jane Nicholl arrived at four o'clock in the morning of the rally. There was a lot of interest surrounding their new weapon, a Ford Fiesta packed with Evo 9 running gear. Emerging as serious championship contenders in 2014, Dougal Brown and Lewis Rochford had upgraded to a more heavily modified Evo 9 for this season. Adding to the pressure was the fact that their old car was seated right behind them in the hands of Mark McCulloch and Michael Hendry, also stepping up their championship assault. Also to look out for, Chris Colley, Stephen Clark, Bruce McCombie, Donnie McDonald and a slimmed down Sean Sinclair. All in Mitsubishi Evos and all with past form. 
With Snow and SS1, Bogey and Ray were first to fall foul of the slippy conditions. Two spins on ice left them in 29th place after the opening test. They fought back with the fastest time on SS2 before being forced into retirement with a damaged clutch. It was bad for Faulkner and Foy too. With wheel spin even in 5th gear, they were only 20th quickest on SS1. 4th fastest in the second test pulled them back up to 10th, setting up the comeback charge of the day, despite Peter losing his glasses at the end of stage 1. This left them equal in time with John Morrison and Peter Carstairs. Lying second in the Group N class, they were once again showing their ability in slippy conditions, with 7th fastest on SS1 and 11th quickest on 2. Only three seconds up on Morrison came Donny McDonald and Andrew Faulkner. After a year of reliability issues with their Evo in 2014, they were happy to build their pace gradually as they got more confident that the car could stand the pace. Holding an early 7th place was the new pairing of Fraser Wilson and Craig Wallace. Having finished in the top 10 of last year's championship, Fraser was once again showing his ability to lead the Group N class after two stages, and was clearly having no problems with his new co-pilot. Four seconds up, Groundwater and Donnelly were going well, Barry making a faster start than usual despite scaring himself in the slippy condition. Returning to the SRC after a layoff, Sean Sinclair was showing he hadn't lost much in the way of speed. Aided by a lower seeding and improving road conditions, he was lying fourth equal with Chris Colley. After a forced engine swap on the Friday morning, Colley would be hoping it would last. Well, you had a brilliant time in stage one. Are things going well? Um, yeah, I was quite surprised actually. I just really drove around the stage, you know, really icy. Um, a bit more grip in there, but just again a little bit uh, lack of confidence, you know, just with it being the first event. So I don't know what time I did in there, but uh, yeah, been good so far. And enjoying yourself? Absolutely. Thank you. There was also a tie for second at this stage. The bright orange Impreza of Armstrong and Swinscoe was tied on time with the slightly less bright green Evo 9 of Bruce McCombie and Michael Coots. Both crews comfortable with their pace so far, but knowing a battle was on for the rest of the day. Two, sec two stages down, I know, I thought you said two seconds down, <laughs> no, it's uh, quite tricky and it, there's different lines, people are taking different lines, so David and Mike are in front of me and it's just like trying to find that grippy bit of road, you come out of junction up a straight, get it at six gear, just max, we did 106 mile an hour and as the maximum speed I've done there, it tells me on my, my computer, so we're going alright at that I think, but could do it be going faster. Yeah. car's going well, it was a quite a slidey stage to begin with. But no, it was a bit in there. It was a bit erratic in there. I think just trying too hard. It was along ditches and bits and bobs. But no, the car's going well. So and you're enjoying good. yourself. Always. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, go. Right five seventy. Right three in forty. Get a crest left four in. Just your came left entry seventy. Well done. Small crest, 140, bridge, open left eight. Open left eight. Long right two over 130 and narrows. Over 130, straight crest and left three. C150 right to the top. But who was leading? No one has ever doubted Stephen Clark's ability in a rally car. Some seriously brave driving combined with running 11th on the road saw Clark and co-driver Phil Sandham emerge from the first stage 8 seconds quicker than anyone else, despite this off-road excursion. SS2 wasn't bad either third quickest time saw them arrive in service with a 15 second lead. Not bad for one of the oldest four wheel drive cars in the rally. Hello. Hello. Quickest in stage one. 
Uh, well, that's, I was told of that rumour, but it wasn't confirmed, so that's uh, not a bad start, yeah. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, it's very good. I mean, the first one obviously was, was very slippy. Um, the second one was much better, but we seem to have lost the, the brake pedal. It's just coming back now, but uh, yeah, it's been good. I mean, it, the grip's difficult, you know, sometimes you've got really good grip and the next time you're, you're just sliding into everything, but the main thing is we, we haven't made really, apart from a small off in the first one, we've made no mistakes, we haven't lost any time, so. An off in the first one? Yeah, I think uh, somebody else was off just after it. There was a downhill uh, left seven before a bridge, and luckily for us, there was a bank on the outside. We were up the bank and, and back on the road, but it never cost any time. You know, what, what, what we lost coming back out, we actually lost, we gained going in, so it was okay. The car that was off belonged to Dougal Brown and Lewis Rochford. Missing a braking point in SS1 left the Evo 9 stuck in a ditch, virtually undamaged. Forty, long left four times five care. Long left four times five care into right five. It's C120. Long left two Titans four. Titans four and right to over Crest Chicane. Left entry. Hold on the outside as you leave it. Big hole on the outside as you leave it. And right three. 250. Left 170. Back out for the second loop and disaster for Clark and Sandham. Stephen missing a breaking point and landing in the scenery. Undamaged but unable to rejoin. A sad end for what had to be one of the drives of the day. Shit. This left Armstrong in the lead of the rally. Two third fastest times in a row saw him arrive at second service with an eight second lead with just the final stage to go. Stars of the show in SS3 were Faulkner and Foy. A storming run saw them 19 seconds faster than anyone else as the fight back continued. SS4 was going well too until the rear tyres gave up the ghost, causing a trip through some heather. Despite this, they only lost two seconds to Armstrong and Swinscoe to hold second overall. McCombie wasn't out of the fight either. A stall at the start of SS3 saw him lose time before second fastest time on four left him one second back from Faulkner with ten miles still to go. Now confident that the car would go the distance, McDonald and Faulkner started to stretch their legs in the second loop, climbing from 8th to 4th and possibly regretting their cautious start. Climbing up one place in this loop, Groundwater and Donnelly continued their consistent run. With only 5 seconds to McDonald, it was still all to play for on the final stage. Making their move into the top 10, Mark McCulloch and Michael Hendry were starting to get more comfortable with each other and the new car. Despite feeling he was making too many mistakes, Mark was clearly really enjoying the new Evil 9. Falling back as the conditions improved, Sean Sinclair and Chris Hamill were now holding 7th, only one second back from McCulloch and Hendry, setting up another final stage battle. Eighth and now the leaders of Group N after Fraser Wilson removed a wheel on a roadside rock, John Morrison and Peter Carstairs were having one of their best runs in recent times and were only five seconds back from Sinclair and Hamill. Making a move into the top ten was former snowman winner Ray Mackay, out for the first time in the ex Sean Sinclair Evo, the pace had been improving all day as he got used to the car. Now in 10th, Andrew Gallagher and Jane Nicholl had spent the day learning the Fiesta, the unconventional looking car was showing its potential with fastest time on SS4. They would have been lying in 5th overall if it wasn't for the 2 minute road penalty. Unfortunately, SS3 saw the demise of Chris Colley and Mark Fisher, the replacement engine letting them down after such a good start. Yeah, stage three, stage three went well. Stage four, uh, come off the start line and the car 
died away and it's it's boosting okay in the turbo but we've cracked the exhaust so it's flat and it's lost its momentum so try it harder and brake later and went wider and made some mistakes so uh, somebody said they were halfway through the stage and Mike was five up me but I came to the end of the stage and I was up in Mike so Mike's made a mistake but luckily I could see where he'd made that mistake so yeah we're going okay but we just need to fingers crossed that everything's right for the, the last stage now so it'll be a long 10 miles I'm sure. <laughs> So you've just done stage three and four. Stage three, you had a fly in time. Was everything going okay for you? Yeah, it was, it was better. There wasn't, or oh, I suppose there was only a mile or so of snow in it. So we just pushed on as hard as we could. We knew, we knew we, uh, that was our only chance. If we were going to uh, make some time back, it had to be then. So we had a big push and close. And then the uh, last one was going okay, but it's really, really slippy. And we got a lot of understeer on the car. We had a few massive moments. So. We have to steady it down a little bit, so but it makes it close going into the last one. Well, there's only eight seconds between you and Jock now. Is there going to be a push in the last stage? Yeah, yes. They don't come for second, but uh, you know Bruce is driving brilliant, and he's only a second behind. So you could go in trying to get first and come out fourth easily. So uh, we just have to uh, give it our best, see what happens. Ah, yeah, oh, it's been a good day. Um, the last third stage, but a wee problem off the line. We stalled it. Driver error. And uh, the last side of fifth stage, it was good. Bit of slippery, but no, we enjoyed it. Enjoying the conditions more this afternoon compared to this morning? Definitely, as I'll bet me a grip out there this afternoon. This morning it was fairly harem scarem kind of stuff, but no, good, good crack. And what's your plan for the last stage? Just do the same we've been doing all day, just keep our going and we'll see what happens at the end. Perfect. Before the final stage, let's take a look at some memorable drives. Bruce McCombie's brother Scott had made his rallying debut in 2014, taking part in select SRC rounds. Clearly driving talent runs in the family, as he had a great run to score 13th overall on his first snowman rally. Better known for his exploits in a Metro 6R4, Stephen Ronaldson had upgraded to a Mitsubishi Evo for this season. Taking his time to get used to the car, he scored a 12th place finish. With a full season planned, he could be one to watch in the future rounds. For 70 and it's fast, small crest left three here and it's fast, small crest and exit 50, flat right one after it. This is the flat right one. 50. Perhaps expecting to be more involved in the lead battle, Quinton Milne and Stephen O'Hanlon spent the day sorting out teething problems with the ex Alistair English Evo. When things went well, they were able to set top six times and grabbed 11th at the finish. Flat right one again, 150, flat right one again, 150. They are looking at it, one left here now, 140, flat one left, 140. Flat left one at the bottom is here. Flat left one, 100, C100. Flat left one, C100. Flat right one, C200. Missing from the final results were John Morrison and Peter Carstairs, slipping off the road in the final stage, almost in sight of John's house, while in a strong top 10 position. 10th overall at the finish was a good result for Ray Mackay and Robert McDonald in their first outing in an Emo 6. Must have felt good to finish an event after years of reliability issues with their Impreza WRC. Taking ninth in the Class 13 win, John Rintoul and Ross Hind had a great run in the Accent WRC. Normally known for his ability on tarmac, John is clearly gaining pace on loose surfaces. Fifth fastest time on the last stage moved Gallagher and Nickel up to eighth in the final standings. Despite the road penalty, it was a good debut for the car, which could be a real factor in the coming events as the development work continues. Sean Sinclair and Chris Hamill made a good return to the SRC with 7th at the finish. Sixth first time out in an Evo was an encouraging result for Mark McCulloch and Michael Hendry. Mark really enjoying the new car. Matching his 2014 snowman result, Barry Groundwater took a solid fifth place. Donnie McDonald and Andrew Faulkner were delighted with fourth. After struggling with reliability throughout 2014, this result must have felt like a win for the Inverness crew.
In the three-way fight at the top, someone had to come third, and this time out it was Faulkner and Foy. On a charge until a front puncture with four miles to go scuppered their chances of a win. A great result, but the disappointment was obvious on Mike's face. Mike, congratulations on third today. That's a fantastic start to your season. How's the day been for you? Yeah, good. I think it uh, sums rallying up in terms of highs and lows all in one day. So disappointed with third because we were trying hard at the end, but we would have been delighted with it at the, when we were 20th at the end of stage one, definitely. And Second overall marked a new personal best result in the SRC for Bruce McCombie and Michael Coots. On the pace all day, they have marked their card early as potential championship contenders with a fantastic ride. So, Bruce, this is your best SRC result to date. There was only a second between you and Mike going into the last stage. Whatever you done must have worked. I we, we stuck on a set of new tyres and then just went for it. And that was basically it. We had a good, clean stage. And uh, Michael was good in the notes, so, no, it was good. And how? Armstrong and Swinsco knew they had to fly on the last stage to keep the top spot. Seven seconds quicker than the Green Eve over 10 miles gave Armstrong his second snowman victory and Swinsco her first after a great day-long battle with both McCombie and Faulkner. It's been it's been changeable and it's been quite difficult at times, Kirsty. So I've just driven driven out. It's quite neat and tidy. The stages where the chicanes in it, I hate them and got a few of them wrong. And you frustrate yourself, but you've just got to calm down. Last stage, and I absolutely nailed the last stage. And I thought Mike, he was coming right in behind me again. I thought, oh no, this is a second a mile, and that'll be me down the road. So I thought, no, I'm going to go the other end, and I did. So fantastic, superb. So next up's the borders with new stages. How are you feeling about that? No, I'm all right with the borders. I'm, I'm all right with new stages as well. It's uh, it's a leveller for everybody then, you know, and I think, you know, if you're staying same stage, same year, it, it, it kind of, uh, I don't know, a lot of people are good at that sort of thing. A lot of people are bad at it, but I'm quite good at my notes, so I'm fairly confident I should be okay. So I'm not saying I'm going to win it. I'm just saying I'm going to be okay. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. As the patented Armstrong star jump lands in Inverness, it's already looking like this could be a classic season, with so many competitive teams at the sharp end. Next up is the Border Counties, with a new look and new stages.